Today we're checking out some incredible portfolios from the likes of Tesla, Meta, Twitter. And towards the end, I'll be sharing how you can literally just copy these portfolios into tools like Figma and how you can design your own portfolios according to them or similar to theirs. So without further ado, let's just get started with the video. So the first one we're looking at is from a designer at Cred. And boy, is this one of the most beautiful websites I've taken a look at. I love these stickers and backgrounds he's kind of used. He's used a nice little texture in the background, like a realistic paper texture. With that, he's also utilized these stickers. Now there is a pack just like this by LS Graphics. I'll give a link to that pack which you can use to kind of create these sticker effects or these broken glass or background effects. If we go down, the first thing that you look at is what he does for a living and he's done it in an interesting manner. So he says, I create beautiful UIs, efficient UX, de delightful interactions and a timeless products. So here, right here, he's stating that he does product design. But as you keep on going down, uh, you kind of see the companies he's worked with. He's done it in an interesting manner as well. So kudos to you, man, for that. He's also given a, a hint of his personal life, which I suggest every designer should pick up from. Now he's giving himself a little bit of credibility, not only by the companies he's worked with, but, but the books uh, he's read. So you have things like FOMO, which is fear of missing out, why of some everyday apps. So you know this kind of, this guy reads a lot, learns a lot on a daily basis and companies do appreciate that, trust me. I love telling, telling stories and motion design helps me share them. So he shared some of his designs, his unique pieces here, not only UI design, but other things that he does as well. As I spoke about in one of my videos, T-shaped designer is important and he's trying to be, or he is a T-shaped designer and he's showing it here pretty well he showed his case studies up front like this you can see all of them on his portfolio he also has people talking about him so these are like testimonials you can always grab testimonials from your clients from your mentors or anybody who can give a good word for you like a little recommendation on your website or portfolio and don't forget to give any or all achievements you've garnered around design not only design but other things as well and then at the end, he ends with these beautiful, okay, you can follow me here, here, and here, which is again, important in your portfolio. Don't forget to give your social links. Employees wanna check that out. So if anybody wants to look just at his design, not at his website, a website will be a good touch point here and not the entire portfolio. So that's a good way of looking at it. The next one is from a designer at Apple called Hannah Shu. Product design based in Silicon Valley, currently designing at Apple. Simple one-liner as most product designers have. Now, she has not wasted any time with her personal information or anything else. She's just stating, this is my work, this is where I work at, and this is my re resume on top. Now, I really like that this work is stated here on the website. Oftentimes, if you do not want to publish on Behance, you can have it here so that somebody doesn't have to navigate to another website. That could be another way of looking at it. I like how she's given a brief summary on the left. Rather than making it a very linear approach, there's everything on the left that the person needs to know about the team, about the years it has created, about the tools, the deliverables, everything. And everything else is also highlighted. A lot of times recruiters do not have time to sit and study every little line you've written. So she's given these highlights so that you can read through quickly. As well as there are enough links to kind of link to who created it with her, what were her roles and everything else. She, at every point of the case study, she's also given screenshots of what was the final visual solution. Oftentimes, a good time saver for the recruiters. She's also given a good problem statement. The only complaint I have is I wish the titles were slightly bigger and more bold so that I don't skip anything. She's given some nice little gifs, gifs and fun elements in the middle. Uh, because she was creating stuff for GIFs and video, this is perfect. She's given, of course, the standard diagrams, etc., that you need to see as a recruiter to know that this person knows the process entirely. Now, here is a quick tip that I've seen a lot of Apple designers, Meta designers, Twitter designers do, is they do not follow the, the normal structure of the portfolio. That's okay for a first project or a second project. But once you get the hang of it, once you have a little bit of experience, Creating things on your own time and your own process is important. Okay, so Abhishek from Meta. This is a unique project because it's very Meta-y. I really like the way he's kind of given a little bit of a graphic. I'm pretty sure he's custom made this graphic on his own and it's really interesting. So always showing your personality up front 
with something you do like drawing, painting or anything can be a nice little touch to your website. I'm Abhishek, a designer who codes. I like to make digital experiences easier and simpler for people. So again, a nice little touch. I would have stated where I work and what I'm doing here upfront, but He's, he's decided not to do that. Here, one thing that I really like is they've given a nice little summary so they don't need to read through. Uh, there's a little summary of what the project was about and the, the timeline and where it was made for whom. I really like how they've given this one liner on top of the project. Oftentimes, if it is a result driven project, give what the result was and why you wanted to do that. How we reduced friction in one of the identity confirmation flow of Facebook. What was the problem and how he's gonna fix it? So now you can check out the team, uh, what platforms it was done and the timelines. You also have a context, which means what is the context of this project? Why did they end up on this project? The project goals. So what do they want to achieve with this project? What are the KPIs associated with the project? Solution. So here, the only thing I, I would have put up is the problem statement right before the solution that would have given me a little better view of everything. Now he's given the design principles he has followed inside this. I think this is a unique take from all the other projects. Of course, if you are following any UX laws or UX design principles, make sure you even state those. That can be a nice touch. Everything has a UI design associated with it. So if you're displaying a UI design, always place a text right next to it, explaining what that UI design is all about. Now he also has something called side projects. I always give tips to people on how you can just make small one day or two day projects. So if you have any daily design projects or anything, you can display it as a side projects on your website. That'll be a nice little visual cue to the recruiter that, okay, this guy knows his stuff and he practices often. A lot of people appreciate that. Now, this is a website I really wanted to showcase, Rhetoric from Twitter Design. He's a part of the design leadership team and his website is what you call as extremely minimal. So these minimal designs are focusing more on just the projects as you can see here. And anytime I press on any of these projects, it loads up a nice little screen here. And this is where the highlights begin. There is a nice little mock-up. He could have put one or two more screens. I would have preferred that. But ServiceNow Digital Experience Case Study Overview of the project, very important. You can read through this. The goals and the roles. That's all you need to have on top. That's what everybody here has. Service now becomes digital first. So he's giving some context up front. What is this project all about and why this company is choosing to go for this project? Then he has what he wanted to kind of build as a design leader. So he's focusing on his role. He's not giving, oh, this is what the process was for the design team. No, he's focusing on his own process, the leader's process. He's also talking about things like design culture, what it took, not only the process, but the investment from the company and the time, etc. Towards the end, he also gives a one-liner on showing how this, how this website or this platform became a hit after this, these design changes and everything that they made. So oftentimes showing the results of the design can be very important. So if you have a project where it increased sales, show it up front, show it the first thing as possible. His about page shows nothing more than his vision, his process, human-centered. So he's talking about how human-centered design has impacted his career, etc. He also talks about his approach. So here he's being more professional than personal, like all the other designers were. And I appreciate this a lot from a recruiter's perspective. All the Elon Musk fans are jumping right now because Mehul Shah is a product designer at Tesla. I really like this little keynote here on the top. Currently working as a senior product designer highlighted at Tesla, highlighted. In the past, I've worked at Microsoft, Highlighted, helping on creating system level components, toolkits, design patterns, and integration. So again, he is talking directly to the recruiter here. He's not going here or there. He's not talking about himself. He's only talking about his work. This can be a nice little note. He's also showing his personal touches as well. His, his blogs and YouTube is here. So his personal touch hasn't gone without, he's still building on that one keynote. He talks about his projects up front. I really like these animations that he's made. Again, a nice little my role, tools, duration, team, location, date. That's the pattern we've been looking at. And it's a really nice highlighted area as well. He's talking about the challenge, the context here. 
Then he starts talking about the product highlights and the key features up front. So he's not going through the process yet. He's showing the final application and there's nothing bad about it. Having the final result up front on the top can often be good context showing just how good he is at the UI designs and what are the final results. Then he starts talking about the process, all the ideation, the prototyping and the research he's done. You might see that he's taken this a separate direction. He's not talking about five steps. He's talking about three steps under which he did different things. Then he talks about a little bit of market research that they did, some facts and figures they want to play around with and the research opportunity. I would have personally given some graphs showing some observations and numbers here. One thing that a lot of people can learn from uh, is putting real pictures of diagrams, sketches, etc. up here with laptops and real, you know, real life situations. Now there are a bunch of ways you can copy these designs or just take out the layout or the structure of the website so that you can use it in your own designs and inspirations. So it's very easy to actually start doing that and convert your websites into actual Figma designs. HTML to Figma by Builder.io is what it's going to be. You can add it to Chrome. Hopefully you'll be able to add it to Chrome. Once you add this as an extension, you go to any one of these websites. I personally like Atul's the best here. And I go to this plugin and say HTML to Figma by Builder and I'll just say capture the page. Once it's done that, it captures the page as a JSON. Now in Figma, you go and say Builder in the community just to search for Builder.io and you just say try it out. And that's about it. Now here you just say run and once it runs, all you need to do is import to Figma. And you can either just copy the URL from there, upload the JSON from here. I just say page.figma.json and it starts uploading with this nice cute little animation right here. And as you can see, this builder mostly, you know, copies everything, including a lot of these stickers and images right here. Now it copies the entire structure. So the less complex the website is, the, the better it will be able to copy and paste it right here. But I'm happy with the results. I just need to kind of create the titles. But apart from that, a lot of these cards, a lot of the designs are copied over. So now all I need to do is just apply my content right here or replace some issues and bugs. Overall, I really like this plugin and I think this is one of the only solutions right now to go from website to Figma. If you have any other solutions, let me know in the comments. I hope you like that video. I see you every week on this channel. So make sure you've subscribed if you haven't do it and hit the like button if you appreciate this video and the content I create. I'll see you next time. Same place, same time. Till next time. Take care. God bless.